Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Space News Pod. This is a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about IFT4 some because that just happened, which is really great. It turned out pretty great for SpaceX. Also, we're going to be talking about what's next for Starship. IFT5, IFT6 possibly, and then we're going to get into some of the next thing, which is a huge deal. SpaceX and Starship on the surface of Mars, retrieving some samples? What's that all about? Okay, so let's go to IFT4. It happened yesterday. Absolutely as perfect as you can get for this flight. What SpaceX was aiming to do for this is to soft land the booster in the Gulf of Mexico, which they performed flawlessly. Absolutely perfect. There's one Raptor out, but that's okay. As they flew out, it was fine. Everything was fine. All the systems worked great. Booster landed in the Gulf of Mexico. They tip it over. It's in the Gulf of Mexico now somewhere. And it's about seven minutes into the flight that that all happened. Boost back burn. Everything was great. And then stage separation. Everything perfect. Everything was perfect. Everything looked great. And then the ship kept going. The ship separated, kept going. Went all the way to the Indian Ocean. Did the belly flop maneuver, which who knew that was going to happen? And who knew if that was going to be successful? SpaceX had a pretty good hunch that it was going to be successful. And they did all the engineering possible to make it successful. And what we saw was the Starship going through the atmosphere, going as hot as possible. And then soft landing after it did the kick maneuver so it could go straight vertical and soft landed in the Indian Ocean. Perfect. We didn't have any video of it landing, but they did hear the raptors roar as it touched down, soft landing in the Indian Ocean. Now, this is for IFT-4. So IFT-4 is a massive success for Starship. Not only did they successfully do this mission, but now they set themselves up for the next few missions and what they can accomplish. Now, before IFT4 started, before they even launched the thing, Elon was on social media. He was talking about what's next. What's up for IFT5? Well, he wants to continue down this path. The same thing. He wants to nail the landing. He wants to make sure the Starship lands in the Indian Ocean, but he wants to make sure that the booster lands at Starbase on the chopsticks at Boca Chica, Texas, next to the Gulf of Mexico on land at their facility where they launch these things. Not in the Gulf of Mexico where it's safe, where they won't destroy anything if they mess up or nowhere close to land. They, you know, like IFT4 was nowhere close to land. So the IFT4 incident report will be much less than IFT3 because nothing really happened that was out of the ordinary. This is exactly what they wanted. So landing the booster in the Gulf of Mexico and landing the ship in the Indian Ocean, exactly what they wanted. So IFT5, Elon wants to bring the booster back to the Starbase facility after only doing one test of the landing of the booster? Is this kind of an insane idea? And he was on Ellie in space too. She interviewed him. Go check out that interview. It's great. But watch this whole thing first. I need, I need the, uh, the watch time. So she interviewed him. He was adamant about landing it. He's super excited about landing it for IFT five. Are they going to do that? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure if they will. It seems like Elon wants to. And if they get enough data from the booster landing, this shows that they were absolutely pinpoint precision in the Gulf of Mexico. I don't see why they wouldn't try it other than there's not a really more than one test case. Whenever you do engineering, whenever you do science, anything, when you're testing, coding, anything, test it against a few different things. Test it a few times. Test it three or four times. Make sure everything works properly because the next one 
there might be something that's busted on it. it might be something that's not exactly perfect and it might not land precisely but even in that case you could detonate it over the gulf of mexico if you see something's wrong but what happens if something's wrong in the last few seconds or the last i don't know 20 seconds when it's over starbase ready to land well that's a whole different thing and yes the booster is about 250 feet tall it's made out of stainless steel and it's absolutely massive so if it does come into starbase screaming hot and they can't destroy it on its way back well there's going to be some problems and that's something that i don't know if the spacex engineers will push back against with elon because sometimes elon pushes back against them um there was early times in spacex's history that the engineers want to do something with carbon fiber or some sort of synthetic and elon pushed back said hey let's do this in stainless steel because stainless steel is easy to get it's easy to manufacture and also we can ramp this up really fast because we have to iterate these designs we have to do hundreds of these rockets in order to make life on mars a thing so do you think the engineers are going to set like push back on elon i don't know that's going to be uh, that's going to be a tough one for the engineers because elon's the head of engineering over there he's the head of everything so if they push back against him um i don't know i i think that they should wait a few times i've talked about this before but i do think they should wait a few times before they actually land the rocket back at starbase just to make sure that everything is absolutely accurate with the landing um, let me know in the comments down below if you think it'll land on the fifth attempt ift5 now there's something else that um elon and company over at spacex are going to be part of in the near future well i shouldn't say near future but in the future with nasa this is a huge deal so right now we have a rover on mars which is collecting samples of soil and possible life uh you know old life um on mars and they need some way to go pick up those canisters and elon and company at spacex have just won a contract with nasa to go try and um I shouldn't say go try and pick it up yet, but they're going to demonstrate how they could pick up these little canisters like this big, like, I don't know how to say it on screen, but about that big, um, of Martian soil, Martian, Martian regolith that could contain ancient life. So uh, if they get this contract, it's like a $1.8 million contract around there, almost $2 million. I think it's 1.5 actually. Um, then if they do this properly, SpaceX would be launching a starship to Mars, but the starship alone can't get the, the samples of the regolith of the soil from Mars. They have to have some sort of rover. So SpaceX may fit what I think they're going to do. I think they're going to get a cyber truck and put it on Mars and equip it with something. I don't know, or maybe a small rover. I'm not sure, but they can fit a massive amount of things into a starship. So whatever they have to do, whatever they have to, whoever they have to team with to get another Rover down there to go pick up all these samples. Um, I think SpaceX will one, they're already partnered with NASA to land on the moon, right? They're already partnered with NASA to fly astronauts. They're already partnered with NASA for, um, all the Falcon nine things. Um, so starship once it's proven on the moon, could easily i shouldn't say easily because engineering super hard but they could um make it and elon has said this that it's easier to land on mars than it is on the moon because there's actually some gravity there and um it it'll be a, a fun fun thing to watch if they can actually get the starship to mars land it and then a rover pops out of the hatch or what if they send people to Mars? What if that's their proposal? What if what their proposal isn't, hey, we're going to send a rover like everybody else. Uh, we have four astronauts that are willing to do this, and we can train them. We can give them spacesuits. We can do everything, and they can walk on Mars, go grab these samples, bring them back, and maybe there's a rover that would look like a Cybertruck that they drive around to get these samples. Uh, that would be... 
that'd be so cool. But that's all speculation right now. They haven't won the contract yet. Um, and they have a little while to do this. So we're going to keep our ears and eyes open to see what happens with this. But this, that's a huge, huge deal. Now, IFT6, what's going to be happening with that? We're not 100% sure because if they try to do the landing at Starbase, um, then IFT6 is going to be similar to what they do with IFT5 unless IFT5 completely fails. Then they'll go back to the drawing board and go back to the um, go back to the Gulf of Mexico. But IFT6, IFT7, not 100% sure what they're going to be doing. But if they do land a booster on uh, IFT5, I think IFT6, they're going to try to get to orbit. And I think they're going to launch a few Starlink satellites just as a test. Even one would be a, a great test. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. And also, if you could hit the subscribe and the like button, because that helps out the show, also helps out the algorithm, also helps out you even more than me, because you get more spaceflight content in your feed, not just from this channel, but from other channels out there that are similar to this, that have other takes on things and talk about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight that you may not have heard yet. So I think um, doing that for every spaceflight channel is always a good thing. So thanks everybody for watching today. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one.